Hey there, nerd dads. It's middle grade author R. Chris Wells coming at you with another episode of Dungeons with Dad. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at a rules-like OSR game that I know your kids are going to absolutely love. So let's go check it out. All right, well, let's dive into May's Rest. And before we get into this review, I do want to say that I did receive this copy of Maze Rats, courtesy of Questing Beast. But I do want you to know that I received no other compensation for this review. And so I'm going to be able to give you my absolute 100% honest feedback on whether or not Maze Rats is a great introduction for you and your family to tabletop RPGs or if you want to look elsewhere. So let's dive in and let's see what we can learn about this game. And I do want to just say up front that Maze Rats, in my personal opinion, seems like a great way to introduce your kids to tabletop role playing because of how simple the system is and how little prep that it will take you as a game master. And you can see here right from the beginning, after some introductory comments, basically the way the game works is you have three stats, strength, dexterity, and will. Strength is all about raw power or using your physicality to manipulate the world. Dexterity is anything that has to do with speed or agility. And then will is kind of a catch-all category that's going to encompass everything from intelligence to perception to willpower. And basically, whenever you face any kind of risk or any kind of scenario where you might fail, you're going to roll a danger roll. And what that means is you're going to take each one of these stats, whichever one fits the occasion, you're going to add that bonus in, you're going to roll 2d6, and then you're going to see if you can get a 10 or higher. If you get a 10 or higher, you're going to avoid the danger. You're going to succeed on that check. If you fail the check, then you as the GM are going to describe how things go awry. And there's a lot of failure in this game, which makes it a lot of fun because then things are going to continue to spiral down and down and down and create a lot of tension. Now, whenever you are facing a situation in which you have the upper hand, the GM can then give you advantage. In that case, you're going to roll 3d6 instead of 2, and then you're going to use the two highest dice. And you can add in your stat for that and see if you get 10 or higher. Combat in this system is very easy as well. You're going to make an attack roll with 2d6. You're going to add an attack bonus. And then you're going to look at that attack roll, compare it to your defender's armor. And if it exceeds it, it's going to hit. And it will equal in damage the difference between the defender's armor and your attack, which is pretty cool. Very easy. So, for example, if you rolled a 12 and your attacker had a armor of 10, then that is two damage. And if you have a heavy weapon, you can add one to that damage. If you roll double sixes, you get a critical hit, and the total damage is doubled, and that's pretty, pretty cool. I won't go into all the other rules of the system, but really where the game shines for me is all of these tables that come together at character creation, spell selection, NPC creation, monster creation. This book is chock full of tables, so much so that if you don't even use Maze Rats for the game itself, you are being given an amazing resource as a game master to just dream and create worlds and characters and monsters for your games. You're going to get an entire Game Master's Toolbox, which is really, really cool. Now, when we come to character creation, again, I love the randomness of this system. In fact, while you can choose different things here, I think it's fun for you and your kids to just roll for your abilities, roll for your starting equipment, roll for your appearance and clothing and details. That is so much fun, and it's kind of different. You know, most kids' RPGs begin with you customizing your character and making them cool. And this is kind of the opposite of that. This is like taking a randomness that can be really fun and really funny and using that to create a character that has no hope of survival. But that's part of the fun. You take these characters that have no hope of survival and when they survive, 
that is really, really fun. So you can see here, and I won't stay long here, but magic, you generate spells by rolling on these tables to create all these custom spells. Kids are going to love that because the game's never going to be the same twice. And every time, every morning, you get to roll in a new spell. I love that. Now, this next section is all about monsters and NPCs and how you create them from scratch. And I won't show you this page because I do want you to go out and get the book. But trust me, you're going to see nine different sections with random tables that allow you to customize the most zany, fun monsters you can possibly imagine. I love the monster and animal section and being able to create new and exciting monsters to throw at my kids. You can see here on the character page, another great asset. All these tables that you can roll on to create NPCs, whether they're civilized, underworld NPCs, wilderness NPCs, lots of names and goals and misfortunes and liabilities. This is going to keep the game exciting and your kids are never going to know exactly what lies around each corner. And I think that is so neat. And you can see as I turn the page, there are even more random tables to fill out these characters from their appearance to their clothing, to their secrets, to their hobbies. I love these tables. Now, again, the next section is all about treasure and equipment. And like all of the other sections, you are looking at table after table after table to be able to customize these treasures with a simple roll of the dice. You're not just giving your kids fine china. You're giving them extra planar fine china. And I think that's super fun. Now, after turning the page from treasures and equipment, we enter into the environment section. And basically what this is going to cover is city environments, wilderness environments, and dungeon environments, which he calls the maze. And so essentially what you do on these tables is you're going to roll a 2d6. You're going to look at the first die. That's going to tell you what grouping you're going to be in. Going left or right, one, two, three, four, five, six on the second row. You're pick which grouping you're in. That's the first die. And the second die is going to tell you which selection underneath that grouping you need to pick. So if you roll a one and a four, you're going to take the first grouping, boom, 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 down to the fourth one. And then that's going to be the word that you choose. Now, here in the dungeon section, or the maze, as he calls it here. Okay, so let's just say that we roll a 33. You can see there on the dungeon entrances, that means that our dungeon begins inside a hollow tree. So you walk inside this hollow tree, and all of a sudden, inside of that, let's look at our dungeon form table. Let's say you roll a 25. There's a court. It's, it's like some sort of royal palace. I wonder what this is. Maybe it's some sort of like gnomish dungeon, this gnomish port. Well, then you can roll down on your dungeon layout. Let's say you roll a 45. So you go down there to the fourth grouping, and you see it's an open plan. It's a big, hollowed-out port, and what's going on in there? Let's look at the dungeon ruminations table. Let's say you roll a 55. Well, then you see that all these gnomes, they're sickly and they're you know, distressed. Well, they've got a plague. And then for a reward for completing this dungeon, you might roll a 24. And you can see there's a reward. You get this guy. And you can interpret that however you want. Maybe there's a gnome that's going to now travel with you and be your helper in this area. Now, what I love about this is I never would have come up with that alone. Entering a tree, you walk inside, they're gnomes, they're sick with a plague. And then if you help them, you receive a guide. I never would have come up with that with my own. But how fun is that? I was able to do just a few rolls off the top of my head, and we can see how an exciting adventure sprung to life. And then the game wraps up with a Game Master's Guide that walks you through a sample game and what that would look like, as well as offering you several different bullet points on how to be a great Game Master. And to be honest, these rules transcend just Maze Rats. You can use them in most all RPGs. And then it ends with a section all about world building and i love how they go back to the old school D, D model where if your kids want a map of the dungeon they have to map it themselves you're just going to describe the dungeon but if they want to be able to have a map and find their way back out of the dungeon there's going to have to be one kid that's drawing that map 
based on what you are saying. I think that's really fun. If you've got kids that are artsy or enjoy drawing, they're going to like doing that. They're going to like keeping that map. And that map is going to be an artifact for them that they're going to be able to use as a resource if they need to get out of that dungeon and get out fast. And that's the game. That is Maze Rats. Now, what do I think of Maze Rats? I think this is a perfect game for introducing your kids to Dungeons and & Dragons. And here's why. I like that the rules are very simple. I like that you can create a character very quickly. So many role-playing games get bogged down in character creation. And let's face it, kids do not have the attention span of adults. And so if you can quickly roll up characters for them and get them right into the game, oh man, that is perfect for kids. So honestly, as I'm looking at this game, I want to rate it a solid A. Now, I will say this game is going to require some imagination on the part of the dungeon master. This is very rules-like, so it's going to rely on rulings by the game master instead of rules. And so you're going to be making decisions on the fly. Yeah, you can jump over that chasm, or, or you know what? You do jump off the wall and land onto the creature. That's totally fine, as long as you pass this dexterity danger roll. You're going to be doing that sort of thing. It's not going to be super crunchy, but I like that. I like that for kids. And as I mentioned in my old school essentials review, I actually like the more deadly combat. You know, it teaches kids that not everyone is a superhero, and you, you may really have to use your wits to survive one day. I like that. I think there are lessons to be learned in that. But one thing that this has over old school essentials is when your character does die because they get matched up against a monster that's just way too powerful, Maze Rats really excels because you're going to be able to quickly roll up another character and jump right back into the game. And so if you're looking for a game that you can sit down and play with your kids, just get a one shot in where they have a blast in a dungeon trying to find treasure and defeat monsters, this is the game for you. It's probably not a game if you're wanting to create a long drawn out epic campaign, but if you just want to do some dungeon delving, and have fun, man, you can't go wrong with Maze Rats. So all I have to say, if you're looking for a rules light RPG that encapsulates the basics of Dungeons and Dragons and introduces your kids to tabletop role-playing, I really think Maze Rats is a great investment. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and go on down to drive through RPG and pick up Maze Rats for $4.99. You won't regret it. This rules light RPG is going to be a lot of fun for you and your kids. And I'm going to tell you, all those tables you're going to get is going to be just a bonus. You're going to want to take these pages and laminate them and keep them around for a long, long time. I definitely recommend Maze Rats for parents looking to introduce their kids to tabletop role playing. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all things Dungeons with Dad. And listen, have you played Maze Rats with your kids? Is this a system that you would like to play in the future? If so, please leave a note for me in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Well, listen, until next time, we'll see you right here on Dungeons with Dad.